It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two former Major League Baseball All-Stars, Jason Kindle, who is not here, Dimitri Young, who is here. Dimitri, what's up? Oh, not a whole lot, Dennis. You know, life of a high school head coach, man, it's, it, I mean, there's more than just coaching baseball, as I'm finding out. I would have been just fine, too. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Way to unpack your let it all hang out about I'm you. Good job, Dennis. Right there. I get, I get one a year. That was my one. Okay, guys. One four-time Stanley Cup champion in Darren McCarty. What's going on, Darren? Hi. <laughs> there it is. The master Bully, of the Dennis. Bully. Bully, That's right. Dennis. I get one. I get one. That's my one. That was great. That was great. Dimitri knows I love him. The master of the Canadian Destroyer, a former X Division champion, Petey Williams. How's she going, eh? We also How's have, she going, eh? We also have a rock star. Lars is not here tonight either. All right, before we jump into the show, let's do some housekeeping. We have a big announcement we're all excited about. We have partnered up with PWI Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and we're super duper excited about this. Those guys were part of my life growing up. I know, Pete, we were looking through your wrestling magazines. God, was it oh, yeah. last year? And you had so last many. Last year, yeah. So many of those magazines. I know Dimitri and Lars, they both subscribe. Oh, yeah. And D Mac, you were saying in Canada, that was one of your favorite magazines growing up. Well, I mean, it's one of the wrestling ones that you could get access to. You know, like, you know, it's just like the constant standard. And I think with anything we talk about, it's the longevity duration you know where you go where we all go to for like tips insiders everybody wants to know what's the next thing what's the next thing it's just human nature so that's awesome dennis great job yep peter yeah, and, uh, yeah yeah so now i remember just to add on to the, the 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 pwi um you know back when prior to the internet you know when wcw and wwe was hot you know you had to dial up you couldn't just go on and see all the all the news and stuff so you either had the WWE magazine in one corner at the at the store, or you're looking at the PWI. And I remember I was like, man, it's PWI. Oh, that, great! I'd always pick them up. And well, you saw him, Dennis. I, I loved him, and I was like, oh, it's a dream for me to be in one of them one day. There you go. You work? okay? I have a story too. I want I want a, I want I, a story too. You got a PWI story? Oh man, yeah. I actually met Bill after he was um at Shea Stadium when I was playing and I totally recognized him. He was taking photos and stuff. And I just went over there and introduced myself, told him I was a big fan of the magazine. And he was like talking about getting out of the business. And I'm like, yeah, right. You know, you've been in it forever and, and you've been a part of my childhood. And it's funny that you hear a baseball player talk about how wrestling people, you know, influence their lives. And really it did. And PWI was a major reason. I love the end of the year specials with the rookie of the year, the wrestler of the year, most hated, inspiration, all of that. And then they had a little quotes and stuff in the back with different people. And of course the rating, the top 10 rankings in the back of the book, especially when you had um, places that you never heard of or organizations like small time organizations, you see names. And then I, I had a magazine and I look back in a current star back like, like Combat Zone or Pro Wrestling Gorilla, and now you see him big time, so it's nice to have that kind of magazine. Nice being part of that. So thank you, Dennis. Hey, if listen. It was you, if it was you, I think it was Petey. Great job, Petey. Uh, yeah, Petey, I, I, no problem. Petey, anytime, Petey, guys. I'll take Petey, all the credit. Yep. Good. Petey. Dennis, we know it was you. Amazing job, Pete. But uh, – <laughs> But but these guys are awesome, and we're more we're, we're excited. You know, it's a it's a lot of social media trading back and forth. We're gonna be on some of their shows. They're gonna come on some of our shows. You'll hear us read some ad for stuff that they have going on, like right now. End of the year issue is about to come out with Achievements Awards 2020 in review. Available now for pre-order. PWIAwards.com. Go over there, pre-order that magazine right now. I once again, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, phenomenal. Glad to be part of it. Now that that part's done. We got a lot to get to. We are not going to do a Sweet 16 tonight, but we're going to do something different is we're going to actually preview the Sweet 16 because this this Sweet 16 I'm really excited about. I really put some thought into. I want you guys' feedback on it, and I want the fans to be able to wet their whistle on what's on this list and maybe give us time to either switch someone out because 
I think this list right here is going to be the most challenging list because every matchup here is a final right off the bat. And what it is is Sweet 16, Top 16 Wrestlers, 2020 MVP. Who's Good. the 2020 MVP in wrestling? So I, I feel like there's a couple names here that probably – should not may not be here but could be moved in and out but who would we do it for so we're going to preview that here in a second i want to talk about sammy guevara and stealing moves and if you're listening on the podcast i did the finger thing because pd knows all about people stealing his moves and we're also going to talk about matt hardy being upset with the wwe because now his brother jeff is in a tag team with matt riddle and they're called the hardy bros so let, let's start with that one because for me, for me, when I read this story about how Matt Hardy is like that's infringement and they're trying to uh, confuse the market by calling them the Hardy bros, I kind of disagree with Matt Hardy. I know it's close, but you, you have in the wrestling history of wrestling, sometimes they take two guys who have catchphrases or a name and they stick them together and do something like that. Uh, Matt Riddle, bro, all the time. Although I don't get Matt Riddle. He's not my favorite guy. But I think Matt Hardy is kind of off the beaten path on this point. And maybe I get it, but at the same time, I think it makes sense with those two. Yeah, I mean, oh. I would agree with, with you, Dennis, because the Hardy, like, all you're doing is taking, okay, everybody knows they were called the Hardys or the Hardy Brothers, right? So they're kind of bringing that back, the Hardy Bros, because Matt Riddle says bros all the time. Um, and not only that, sometimes, like, I, I've seen – uh, people just, you know, you're in a tag team now, you know, you, you kind of, what we got for you is kind of either uh, your character stale or we have nothing for you, or let's like, try you in a tag team. That's happened to Bobby Roode. Like he was in team Canada with Eric Young. And then he went on with uh, James Storm. Remember the name of their team? Beer money. Beer money. Why? Because James Storm drank beer. And Bobby Roode was doing the Wall Street gimmick and, you know, so beer money. It makes sense. It was huge. And then after that, I think uh, Bobby Roode teamed up with, like, Austin Aries. And now uh, he goes over to WWE, dirty NXT, Hill. all that kind of – what's that? He was the Dirty Hill. Dirty Him Heels, Austin yeah. Aries. So, I mean, he's he's all tag team guy. Now he's with uh, Ziggler, and uh, th that's what happens sometimes. It's like, okay, we tried you as a – Dirty doll. <laughs> Dirty um, but yeah, you, like you try him as a singles and then it's like, okay, we got, you know, you're kind of stale. And then it always sets up for this. What's, what's going to happen inevitably with the Hardy bros. They're eventually going to turn on each other and feud you with each other. I mean, that's what happens with tag teams. So um, I don't know how long it's going to be for, but you know, I, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, what the potential is. Go ahead. I, per I personally think that um, Matt Hardy's wife is in his ear with that one. Yeah. Because she likes to stir the pot. And because Matt normally doesn't say anything, he's usually, it seems like a guy that just goes with the flow. But if he's nitpicking about this one and his wife, and some people have wives that are outspoken, and his obviously is, he's probably putting that in his ear. And, you know, I mean, it does come off kind of silly, though. It's like, it almost pays homage to him because when people think about the Hardy bros, first of all, they're going to think about Matt Hardy and, and they're going to think about, you know, what he's doing now and then basically ripping off private party from what I see with that contract and stuff. But yeah, I would, I would actually be cool with it if I was Matt, but I'm not Matt. No, I, I, uh, I don't want Jeff Hardy's one of them. And here's the thing. It's his brother that, you know what I mean? If he's not fine with it. So I don't think I'd ever mix up the Hardy boys or the Hardy brothers and the Hardy bros. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think Dimitri's more onto something than anything. It's, it's splitting hairs. And I think that any time, listen, the object right now is the WWE to be a bitch about AEW and TNA. Matt Hardy's, doesn't need to if they're doing things like that let the people you know be let the fans be the ones to to get upset about it that right i don't think it's it's a good look for for matt hardy but there's there's always more to the story the, and you know what you never know you don't know if it's jeff going hey uh, i can't say anything because you we all know how wwe rolls with an iron fist jeff may have called his brother and said 
I don't want to do this, but they're making me. And Matt's like, hang on. I got this. Hold my beer. I'll be right back. <laughs> that's probably what happened. Yeah, hey. That's a good perspective. Well, that that's what Petey, like Petey would understand more of the intricacies in the back. And, and then because you're dealing with WWE, Dennis, I think that's as close to right as you can be. If we were talking about other organizations, I don't think it would apply as much. Now, is it? Have you ever seen that PD backstage where you know someone's not happy, but they can't really say anything, so they'll go through back channels? Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna. What? It's a podcast. I what? need to say words, Pete. Do they use the oh. puck on the ice when they play hot? What did you just ask? <laughs> it was just <laughs> backstage <laughs> politics. In oh, a good going, sport Dennis. That's individual, Thanks. and it's all about me, me, me. We're making PWI proud right now. Yeah. Oh gosh. Sorry, that is sure. oh, yes. So do you want to hear my, you want to hear my Rebby story or what? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. You know, I totally forgot about this until uh, Dimitri brought her up. Um, so I used to work with her uh, in a company called Lucha Libre USA. Do you ever remember me telling you about that, Dennis? It was on uh, MTV2, I believe. Yep. Okay. And it was obviously Lucha Libre. We were the bad guys because um, we were, I guess I was from Arizona and they portrayed us as like Republicans or something. And it was all about the, whatever it was. Anyways, Rebby worked for the company. She was just a manager at the time, but um, the production was pretty bad there. And I just, I had to step in. I said, you guys are doing everything wrong. And I just kind of took control. So they made me an agent and I had to agent uh, Rebby's first ever match. I remember I had to like walk through it with her with the other females and show her how to do a tornado DDT and all that kind of stuff. And I think this is before she got hooked up with Matt and everything, but she was, she wasn't a wrestler at all. And we kind of, I just remember walking her through step-by-step. Step, yep. Do this duck under this do like just called the whole match for her. And uh, it was her, it was her very first match from what I understand. Very first. Interesting. Cool. How'd she do? Do you remember how she did? No, I don't. Um, I wish I did, but I just remember that. Uh, I think she did okay. I mean, she had, I think she had one spot in the match uh, because we knew that she wasn't a, like, I think she was training to be a wrestler, but she wasn't like, she didn't have it yet. Um, and we only had like one spot for her. We, we made sure we walked through it like so many times and stuff like that. Um, plus it's taped. So if, you know, if you mess up and then you just refilm it, right? All right. So let's move on. Uh, as we saw, I guess it happened today or yesterday, depending on when you listen to this podcast. T Bar from Retribution and WWE apparently got upset with Sammy Guevara. And I'll go step by step through the tweets because this kind of falls into the PD Williams land of people still in the Canadian Destroyer. And I, I've got, I might have a different take on this from you guys. But here's T Bar's uh, tweet. Some little virgin on AEW stole my finisher like four years ago. We did a show together. I'd steal something. I'd steal something from his move set, but it's all just King Ricochet's moves. Now, uh, Sam, now Sammy replies. Someone tell T Bag the move was actually. <laughs> one point for Sammy. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Uh, he tell tell him it actually belongs to Matt Demontrest. Do you know who he is, Pete? Matt Demontrest. Uh, not off the top of my head. Matt Demontrest. No, I, I don't. D e m o r e s t. I don't think spelling is going to help. I figured. Yeah, I, I, not off the top of my head. I'd have right. to probably see him. The guy he stole it from. And I'm just trying to get the move to be seen on TV since you've never been on TV. And while you're, oh. at, yeah, I know, right? He goes, and while you're at, while you're sitting there doing nothing at catering on Mondays, check out my new video bro vlog. <laughs> T Bar comes back with someone tell the Panda Kid I had a singles match on TV last night. Ooh, by the way, um, <laughs> I didn't steal the move from some backyarder. I, I thought of it in a professional wrestling ring with King, with Kill for Nova. I don't know who that is. Try being creative sometime instead of oh, I don't know, making jokes about rape, which I don't know. Oh, uh, that goes no, that goes back to remember he got yeah. fired yeah. and all that kind of so, stuff for saying that about uh, Sasha. Okay. So, yeah. 
All right. First of all, that's dirty pool. I think if you have yeah, that, that, that one's now you're getting, now you want to fight for real. Like the other one was lock, locker room. Like you can go back and forth, but you right. want to start. I agree. Yeah, he got personal. The that was a low blow. So it's actually T bar loses a point for that. So Sammy yes. two T bar negative one. I, I, yes. I agree. So T bag T bagged himself. <laughs> T bag T bag himself in that one. Yeah. Well played, Dimitri. Well played. Now Pete, since you're a guy who had the Canadian destroyer stolen, now ev- everybody on every show uses that move and not even in the proper way. What is your feeling on this? Well, first, uh, I, I don't know why, um, but I don't know what move that they're claiming that they stole from each other. Uh, Dimitri, do you know, or DMAC, uh, you know, off the top of your no, head? No, I, you don't know. No. Okay. Uh, I'd probably have more perspective into it if I can see it and I could, you know, be like, oh, that they did a little bit different or they did a little bit different. But, you know, I mean, Sammy, T-Bar, everybody has to understand, like wrestling's a uh, – it's kind of like an honor among thieves. Like, I, I don't know how to really explain it. Like um, back when, you know, when I was an impact, like my first go around, uh, I remember who was it? Like Eddie Guerrero and I don't know, somebody else that does a frog splash. Um, and somebody asked Eddie, like, Hey, I, I'm doing the Stark match today. Can I do a frog splash? He's like, yeah, I don't care. It's not going to be on TV. So you don't like back in the day, it, you don't do somebody else's move, right? You, you just don't do it, not within the same company. They work in different companies. So I guess you could say it's okay. That's what we've accepted now. Like if you work in a different company, you can do it. But then like I'll see an impact. I'll see everybody do a, a Canadian destroyer. They never do it when I'm there. I don't even have to say anything. They'll, they, they just never do it. It's one of those respect things. Well, um, Well, hang on now. I won't say his name. That it's not for this podcast, but I've been with you at an impact taping where someone will send someone else over and ask you if you can do the move yeah. on TV. And it happened yeah. every time I was with you. So, yeah, so that does happen, but it's, it's okay. So it was a, a luchador that would do that. Um, eh, and, Wait, and maybe you're... somebody else that wasn't a luchador. I, I, there was a few instances, but it, it's really in Mexico, the, the demeanor is different. Like they're, they're rules. Um, everybody can do everybody's move. Like it's like, okay, everybody does like a, like a plancha or a, you know, like a tilt roll backbreaker. Like it doesn't matter. Like you, everybody, you could see a Canadian destroyer every single match, the psychology and how the fans uh, watch uh, Lucha Libre. It's different than in the U S just totally different. So they don't look at it like that. Um but in, in the U.S., that's how we do it. That's At least that's how we used to do it. Now it's like – now they kind of switched it where it's like – now we have a, a big, like, female population in, in wrestling and the male population. They kind of like, oh, yeah, uh, you, you can do a cutter on the show, okay, but you're the only one that does a diamond cutter um, for males. And the females, you could do it too because now it's a, it's a female match. So we kind of broke it off into there too. I don't know how it happened, but it that broke off as well. So – Wrestling has changed so much for Sammy and Huber. If you're listening, um, get over yourselves. All right. I mean, <laughs> just get over yourselves. I, everybody and their mother has done a Canadian destroyer. And I mean, you don't see they me have. sitting here bitching, right? Yeah. I got a question, Petey. Um, what is the over, what's the protocol of, let's say, like, for instance, you came up with the, with the Canadian destroyer. Like, did you get that from someone or did you invent it yourself? And, and like, if you invent a move, like people, people call you, correct? To uh, ask the, you know, permission to use the move or, or, I I mean, I I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how it goes because, you know, I I always hear that, you know, someone will call and ask. So it's like, yeah. So you hear that in the big times, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like you hear that, like from Randy Orton and all, all those guys. And like Kenta when and I first um, started, CM Punk, like with the go to sleep. Yeah, I don't know. Did he call Kenta? I don't know. Do you guys know the story behind that? So Kenta started that. Um, I think he just maybe did it. Again, different country. So, you know, a lot of American fans aren't hip to what's going on and know who Kenta is and it's called the go to sleep and all that kind of stuff. So when they see it from CM Punk, they think that, oh, that's his move. You know, it's on 
whoever gets it on TV first, it's their move. Um, but there's no, if I'm on the show, they'll ask, nobody's calling me up. I mean, I, if, if people call me up every time they want to do a destroyer on the show, uh, I mean, I probably have no phone battery left. I mean, it's, it's, that's ridiculous, but, uh, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, like Adam Cole, like, you know, he used to watch me when he was in high school, when I started doing the Canadian destroyer, you know, now you see he, him rename it the Panama sunrise. Sure. I mean, it is what it is. Um, but there's no, at least now, uh, etiquette in wrestling has changed. When I first started, that's the one thing that you would never do. Like it, it, I, it was hard for me to just get the Canadian destroyer in a wrestling match in, in, in mainstream, like on TV, because it was a move like nobody would ever see before. And think about it. If I'm wrestling you, Dimitri, and we're used to doing the same old, like, you know, types of matches. And I said, Hey, there's this, this new move I want to try. It's called, uh, well, there's no name for it, but what I do, it's like a pile driver, but it's flipping and I'm going to drop you on your head. Does that sound okay with you? You're going to say no, you know, you're old school, right? Like <laughs> at this phase in wrestling where moves like that don't exist yet. So right. it was a center point when I, like when it got on TV, you know, and uh, you know, I got to think like guys like Chris Saban that, you know, helped me get, like he was the first one to take it on television. Um, Red, apparently Red made up the move when he was like 10 years old or something like that, unbeknownst to me. I guess Red made up every single professional wrestling move that he has videos for. Um, and guys like that. and even, even, uh, even AJ Styles, AJ Styles, uh, he was one of my first main feuds, like when I was the exhibition champion. And he was like, you know what, Petey, I want to take that move. You know what I mean? So people were like, it, it was a struggle. Like you have no idea how much the struggle was for like uh, probably a, over a year of me getting the move over and then getting people to be comfortable with it, letting them know I'll protect them and I won't hurt them. And then once that happened, it just, it changed the business. It's like, okay, we could do these moves that are defy gravity that don't make sense in real life. That would never happen. Like we're, we're taking a video game move as, as Sammy Callahan would say, we're taking a video game move or we're making it reality. And now that's, that's all you see now. So the, the wrestling business has changed, I would say, pretty much very close at that point. On the flip side, will you tell your Scott Steiner Canadian Destroyer story? I don't even remember it, Dennis. I mean. What? Uh, oh, like oh no, I remember. It. Yeah, it was a Wrestling Perspective uh, episode 67. Yes. Uh, four minutes and 27 seconds in. So if you go check out that, then, I, yeah, I say it there. I don't, it, I, I don't what, what was it when he was asking like can you give it to me or whatever yeah yeah i could i can take it pd i don't even remember scott and steiner they, and they everybody want... knows scott steiner's a bully right <laughs> and uh he tries to bully his way but me and scott get along great i actually i want to try to get him on his podcast but oh, uh, yeah, he'll probably want money he'll probably want money or something like that uh for the shonies we'll go to a shonies and eat yeah, one night. right well yeah he's we'll a shonies. he owns a shonies in uh, we're in Georgia, right? Yeah, Atlanta or something like that. They Holy still, they what, still exist is, out there. What is it? I don't know now because it's, it's like a, a it's like a Frisch's out, up there, like a Frisch's big boy. Oh. It's oh, called okay. Shoney okay. down south. Yeah, like Golden. It's just like big boy. It used to be big boy out here in California. No longer. Hey, here. When we when we get off this call, guys, you guys have to. Uh, he was on the news. Scott Steiner was on the legit news, like whatever, like you know ABC local news or whatever. And he's there, and then he's out front of his Shonies, and the guy from Georgia, you know, the, the news reporter saying, like, yeah, you know, there was a, a robbery here, and uh, a guy ran through the parking lot, whatever, whatever. I'm here with local business owner Scott Steiner, which isn't even his real name, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, like, on the bottom of the screen, it says Scott Steiner, and he's, like, totally normal. Like, uh, yeah, you know, we don't usually get a lot of uh, this kind of stuff around here. Yeah, the guy just you know came off across the parking lot and then the cops stopped him and stuff and they're like well thank you so much uh mr steiner and i'm like that's not his real name you're using fake <laughs> names to, to, for this local business guy like you guys have to youtube it when we're, we're out of here but um yeah you don't want to hear my scott steiner story because you Let's can't remember on. because you can't remember I, yeah i can't i'm trying to think all it was was like uh and then I, he I wanted Scotty. you to take his finisher that he hasn't used in 15 years oh, okay now i remember so Jeez. I said, Scotty, what do you want to do in this match? And uh, you gotta use his voice, you got to do the Scotty impression. I, yes, okay, Dennis. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I said, you know, Scott, what do you want to do in this match? You know, whatever, whatever. And he's like, oh, you know, I said something like, yeah, yeah, well, we're not going to do the Canadian Destroyer. You know, I don't, I don't think you could take it. And he goes, take oh. it. Can you give it to me? And I'm like, uh, no, Scotty, we're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. I'm like, well, what do you want to do for a finish? He goes, mm, Steiner screwdriver. And I'm like, well, can you, can you give it to me? He's like, well, can you take it? You know, like, and I'm like, Scott, you haven't done that in like 10 years. I'm like, are you sure? And he, he did mess up my shoulder pretty bad with that. But uh, <laughs> no, he, uh, he, yeah, he's like, it's Scott. Let's move on. <laughs> he, let's just, let's just move on. Uh, Dimitri Dimac, you guys as fans, how do you feel about either when you hear of a Twitter beef of someone stealing a move or as fans, when you watch one move and then you turn to the channel and you see someone use the same move later, what do you guys think? I think it's the evolution. You know, I think Petey nailed it. I mean, we're not, this isn't, it's every sport, every entertainment, everything else. I think, I think it's more of an, um, uh, an homage. I'd like to know that there's certain moves. Like it's great to hear that Stone Cold blessed Kevin Owens with the stunner. You know, like there's different things like that, like different conversations. But I don't think it's like it used to be. But you saw somebody else do Superfly Snook off the top rope. No, now you see Montez Ford do the frog splash that year that it's been done a million times. You know. And he's added a little RVD to the end of it, you know, a little pop off the end, which is, I think guys are, it's more of an homage honor thing because it's not like Petey said, you haven't seen it. It's just, how do you see it better? What are some of the best matches excitement wise? There's some when they're uh, I, that I've enjoyed off the top of my head is the like uh, eight man tags when they're doing each other's finishers, bang, bang, one, boom, boom, boom. It's just, it's amazing because growing up, you'd never see that. The matches, I guess, were designed differently. So now you see a lot of finishers at different spots. The The matches are called differently. You know, you, I mean, before when you used to see the, the Hogan leg drop, it was all over, right? Now it's like they start off the match with it. So yeah. I think that that things have changed. So, and when you hear from PD on, as long as people don't do it disrespectfully, like do something out of to disrespect somebody, unless it's in the storyline, right? You know? Yeah. Because like that, would, that would be the ultimate. Like the ultimate is if you could, if you're having a feud with some guy and you do his finisher better than he does, right? Like, I mean, that's the ultimate mind jack to whatever else wouldn't it like to me that would say that then you've got total dominance over him it's sort of like t-bar t-bar sort of when he went to sammy to the rape allegation and that was automatically ended it you 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 know you're ejected from the game you don't get to play anymore you're a dick you know yeah. what i mean like that's not the stay within the realms so i think that that I agree with that. I like what P said. It's always great to hear from the guys that are in the middle of it, you know, either behind the scenes or in the middle that have been there because they know. Dimitri? Well, I like when they pay homage, you know, like the Mikinoshu driver or the Spicoli driver. You know, when they when they bring up the history of the move and who did it, I kind of like that when that happens, you know, when – um even though Ezekiel Jackson didn't last long in um, WWE, he had the human torture rack, which I was a Lex Luger fan growing up. So when I saw him doing it, it was like, oh, man, a big, strong dude being able to do that. It, it was fitting for it. And then uh, one of the Bellas also did the move as well. And I like when it's fitting for that move. But I like the finisher to be a finisher, not just a setup move. Like, okay, I did this move that used to be a finisher. Now people just shake it off. And you have to do like some crazy stuff. So I like the finisher to at least be the finisher. Well played. Well, well said to, uh, you know, uh, and that's, I think, Petey's complaint with the Canadian Destroyer is it's no longer a finishing move in wrestling. It's done eight times in a match to set up other things. And Am I right, Pete? No, you're absolutely right. Uh, 
we were actually, uh, man, right before COVID, we had this big show planned. Uh, it was like the old school uh, TNA we were going to bring back. I, it, that never happened. Uh, it was WrestleMania weekend, but I was also going to do a show for Sammy. Uh, I don't want to give anything away just in case we actually do it, um, you know, coming up this year uh, for WrestleMania weekend. But uh, you're sometimes you got to make fun of yourself. And that's what we were going to plan on doing. Uh, like I said, I don't want to give anything away, but yeah, um, it, nobody uses it for a finish. I really liked what Dimitri said. Uh, and now that I remember it playing all the scenarios in my head, you'd have like, you know, gorilla monsoon or like even Jim Ross, like kind of the old older school announcers that would be like, Oh, that's the, you know, whatever the move is made famous by so-and-so given it like yeah. the history of the move. That's, that's awesome for the commentator to do rather than like saying like, well, I've never seen that move before. Like when I heard Corey Graves say that to uh, when uh, I think Adam Cole first did the Canadian destroyer uh, off the second rope and Corey Graves was like, what's that? I never seen that before. I'm like, Corey, I've, I think I've given it to you before. Like, you know, like there's, there's video of this, like back in like IWC, like in Pittsburgh, like what? So I think, not to insult the fans fans appreciate it if they were like oh yeah there's the stole or there's the stunner made famous by stone cold when kevin owens does it like fans appreciate that because it also puts the stamp of approval on you know uh the like kevin doing the move it means more like it was always used as a finish all that kind of stuff i think they should get back to that kind of thing Mac, let me ask you this, and for the wrestling fans that don't watch sports, Darren McCarty, four-time Stanley Cup champion, was on one of the most famous hockey lines called the Grand Line. If if there was ever, a, and there might have been, and it might have slipped through my peripheral in, in hockey, but if there was another Grind Line that happened in hockey, would you have been offended? Was there a protocol you would have been okay with another team using? Well, Because this kind of is the same thing. A kind of gimmick infringement. No, because you know what? There's the, it's. I think what Petey said, right? See, because when the story goes to, you know, where it came from, how did it? And this is the evolution. And I think that's why Jim Ross and the guys that care the AW is is you know as you're watching guys, you know, for example, like the FTRs and more of the tacticians and, and the difference to what, what the story is that they're telling. Right. And I think that that's the obligation of the company to, to educate the younger fans. And when it's not done, it's more of a slap in the face because the object is Dennis and hockey is that if you can, if you can have, if you have a grind line on your team that can produce like ours did and have the same numbers, then you know what you're gonna need one because it's it's just sort of the meat and potatoes. No, because it's often do it's often uh, tried to be duplicated and it can't. Now teams have versions of it, and I think that just what Petey said, <laughs> it's everybody's personalized version of what it is. It's just I think that when you see the story of it, like like you said, the pan the when I first saw. Like when we were sitting over, for example, people know that the three of us have watched a bunch of wrestling together, but to hear Petey talk about the Canadian Destroyer and, you know, why it's different or why, you know, the execution of it, you look at it differently. And I think at the end of the day, um, you need those ingredients in everything. So if it's a grind line to be a to be a Stanley Cup champion, you need one of those things. If it's if it's the storyline, it just adds to the to the better story when there's an explanation along the way. You know, it's like it's like for example, a match that on uh, uh, David versus Goliath, or you know, somebody has no chance to win, but but the match plays out with a psychology where you're like, this in a real world. This guy has no chance, but because it's wrestling, he has a chance. And the story, as long as it makes sense, plays out. You know, but, like, it, 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 it just has to go with the story. It just seems when it's in there, it's like a nice, it's like when you get the, I don't know, on, on a chapter and, you, and you've read it, it ties a nice bow to it. When I hear this match and I'm watching this and I hear the announcer go, 
oh, and there's a move, and they yell back in the day, he did this, and oh, you remember the time? It's just the same thing you did to ask Petey. These, these are the things you want to hear. Absolutely. And you know what the funny thing about this, this whole topic was? Right before Petey you know, stepped away from the podcast in the early days, we started this thing, and it actually was, was well played in one of my favorite podcasts where – once a year, Petey Williams will give his blessing to one person who has done the Canadian Destroyer the best and let them use it. And it started with Chelsea Green. Uh, I, I, she, she did a Canadian Destroyer, and it was great. And I tagged Petey in one of her tweets, and I think she got pissed off at me thinking I was trying to start a fight, and she blocks me. Petey ends up getting her on the podcast, and I'm like, hey, listen, so this is what we did and why we did it. She's like, oh, and Petey gives her the blessing. And that podcast of listening to her and how excited she was that Petey gave her a blessing. Because you would think that someone would be like, what? Ah, that That's cool. Whatever. Move on. And I I, I, gotta, I don't know if I still have it. If I do, I may have to try to refind it and rerun it and post it as a flashback episode. But that was one of the coolest experiences on how excited she was that you gave her that blessing. I mean, uh, I don't even know if she's done it since that day because I think that was like the first ever AEW big pay per view. The what, what's their battle royal called? The the money the casino royal battle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah something. I, I can't remember the exact name, but she was. Uh, I know she wasn't in that. I think she was in the multiple like female match, and she did the destroyer. Um, and like I was like, yeah, she could have like a. She's Canadian, so I mean, you got to give her the blessing. She's already got half the name right there. Um, and I'm like, yeah, why, why not? Like, you know, hopefully it starts something like, like a trend or something like that. I don't know what we were thinking, Dennis, but um, we, we got to, yeah, we got to handpick somebody this year. Well, um, I think Petey, here's the, here's what I is, is I'd like to know. I'd like, you know, if Dennis, you could do an episode, a bunch of different Canadian destroyers and Petey breaks them down and tells me, tells me why they're good and why they're not good. And this is what he likes. And, and because because it, like it's it's it like you said it's one of the first if when you see that move for the first time it's like it's a video game move it's how do two guys do a D, do a pile driver and do a flip and 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 do it safely like you said how do you convince these guys the storyline of listen it's gone from the fact is of listen I can protect you and do this and everybody going no, 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 to you, like, telling us AJ Styles and all the big boys, they want, oh, okay, to, you know, to Scott Steiner, to now everybody does it. They wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't safe. You know, they, they even, only certain guys are allowed to do a pile driver. You know, di different mentality, things like that. And I think that if they know why they're doing it, because there's kids probably doing it or wanting to do it and don't don't even know the history of it. So... I like to set them straight, you know, like that's the whole thing is, and, and I always felt when I hear, like, for example, there's a kid that played that grew up in Michigan, played in Columbus, played in Anaheim. He, he was a tough kid. His name was Jared Bull, right? NHL player played, played a long time. But when you hear his interviews and he, you know, idolized the grind line and that's the way he sort of played. Well, it's the same thing. I idolized Rick Tockett. Rick Tocca was the captain of Philadelphia when I was growing up. He could fight, he could score, he was the captain, you know, that's who I wanted to be. So there's not, you know, it's a pass it down, pay it forward thing. So I'd like that, Dennis. Like, I mean, if, if you're taking that, yeah. not, I mean, if you're done chirping Dimitri and, and everything like that, you know, like you were at the beginning, if you're <laughs> looking to make friends again, I mean, I don't know. That was great. I, 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 I like, I, I'd, I'd like it. I'm, I think the fans listen. would like it. I've sat with both of you, watch Canadian destroyers that just randomly pop up on wrestling matches, and some kind like not even thinking about it. I'm like, no, you that's did it, brutal. camera. Like, I know you've seen me do I'm it. Sick. So let me, yes. So let me here. I'll break it down because it's amazing. So for we Dennis, Petey, and I have watched a bunch of wrestling matches together, and we're talking, not even paying attention, like oh this that or whatever, and. It's like having a conversation, and I do it the same way as if, if the hockey game was on in the background, and I saw something that just was oh, oh, I'd kill that guy or something. And Petey's off, he's like, ooh, that, no, that wasn't good. And me, as the amateur, is going, wow, uh, you know, maybe something my 
watching so many matches, my eye where the symmetry wasn't right. You know, the flow wasn't right to it. You knew there's something off, but then you go, oh man. And obviously it's like, wow. And then to hear that. So I think that there's so much to it. I think that you weren't there, but we learned that in our interview with Sammy Callahan. You know, you, you, you realize why he is so good because he owns it. And that's, he, he's not, he's not playing his gimmick. He's living his gimmick. You know what I'm saying? On, on a different, he's the person, you know, Jeremiah or Jeremiah is a bigger, you know, more rounded, but you can tell why Sammy Callahan works because men mentally he gets who that character is. All right. Well, listen, before we jump in and do our Sweet 16 preview, which we've never done a preview, this is kind of exciting, the preview part. Just a reminder, official PWI on Twitter, go over there, pwiawards.com. That's where you can get the magazine. They're now part of the family. We're part of their family. We're really excited about Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Don't forget, we do have our new YouTube channel where you can actually watch the podcast. We're excited, so go over Wrestling Perspective, subscribe, make sure you watch, leave comments, tell your friends. Uh, we still have the regular podcast on all major podcast platforms. Make sure you subscribe and tell your friends. That's how we grow, and we love doing this show for you guys. And and this is, this is an organic show that has morphed into something better than I have ever thought. We've got the most amazing cast and characters, so we just want to make sure we can get the most possible eyes on what we do because we like to do it for you. And listen, if you guys have a Sweet 16 idea, wrestlingperspective at gmail.com, email me the idea. Email me your 16 people in that idea, and maybe we'll read it on the podcast and vote on them. So we're, we're more than happy to do something that you guys have an idea with. It's less work for me. Without further ado, DMAC, PD, you ready for this preview? Oh, let's, uh, yeah, let's hear it. All right, Sweet 16 2020. Who was the wrestling MVP? If you listen to any of the Sweet 16s in the past, th it's difficult for us to vote as we go because everything is, you want everybody to win and they can't. So here is the 16 people that have been selected. Feel free to, to tell me to switch someone in or out. We can take fans' pulse and see where, where things are. Kenny Omega has made the list. That's a given, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. FTR has made the list. Yeah, they're their hot tag team. Uh 2020, that was a big year for them. Yep. Roman Reigns. Oh, obvious. That's that's obvious. No, no. Especially with this new Dennis, character. Dennis, yeah. Um Dennis, one question. FTR is one, right? So that's three people. The, tag teams are one person. Yeah, tag yeah. team one person. Yeah. Okay. So hey, Petey, do I need to uh should I be writing this down? I got no, it. I can uh, text Dennis, you Dennis will have the list. So that's just for us to sleep on, you know, yeah. so that way when we come back and it might get switched, you know, if the, if uh, the listeners or the viewers are like, yeah, you know, I don't agree with, uh, he just said Roman Reigns. I don't agree with Roman Reigns. I really think that so-and-so that's not on your list had a better year. Maybe you should switch it out. Um, you know, that's, you, we'll consider it. Yeah. Yes. But well, yeah, you should probably take notes. D Mac, you should probably <laughs> take notes if you want to, uh, I, I can send you it. By the way, if you tell me you don't agree. Oh, that would be nice. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. But it, by the way, fans, if you tell me you don't agree with someone, give me an alternate. Don't just say, this guy shouldn't be on the list. Give me someone no, who yeah. should be. So I have a solution to the problem. Go on, Dennis. Sasha Banks and Bailey. I put them together as a tag team since they spent the majority of 2020 as a tag team together. Okay. okay. So I figure it'd be that's a, fair. Hey, that's a, that's a slimy, great, greasy little way to get a 21 in. I love it. Or, Thank you. Or, I mean, or I, 17 in there, you know, because the, think about it, because they're the ones that you could argue on an individual, you know, to two. So either or. So there's a special caveat, in my opinion, because not only tag team, but also individually, that should, in my opinion, Get that little extra star that teabag lost. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, D-Mac. Because I did – I was like, man, how, they both deserve to be on here, but here's these other people. <laughs> how do I do this? So I'm, I'm glad. Uh, the Motor City Machine Guns, they had a surprise return. Really wow. kickstart the Impact Tag Team division again. I feel like they should be on the list. 
Kyle yeah, and I believe yeah I believe uh Alex Shelley he I he might have started off 2020 or maybe it was the end of 2019 but he might have started off at Ring of Honor too so he's I, I he was was NXT in 2019 or 20 I don't know so yeah that's a good one he put them together big tag team yeah Kyle Kyle O'Reilly made the list for me at least Fellow part, Canadian, FYI, yeah. so good. Okay. Part of the Undisputed Era. The, I mean, some of the things he's done, I mean, phenomenal. Yeah, no, he's oh, I, uh, I, I, yeah, he's I the agree. real deal. He, Even in Ring of Honor, yeah, it's starting to, to transition over. He's, he's, he's going to have a good 2021. He's one of my uh, – he's one of DMAC's late to the party guys. You know, like I'm late to the party on him, and I've been watching a lot of stuff because the – like I said, the war games was really to the, the guys with the longevity and the workers and, and you know, and then to watch him and Finn Balor's match, you know, like, the, like there's, yeah, proud, proud, another proud Canadian, right? Yeah. yeah. Another proud Canadian. All right, Randy, go ahead, Dennis. Randy Orton. Yeah, he had a great year. This was like uh, rejuvenated his career. I thought, you know, maybe after 19, he's like, eh, he can't do anything else. So, yeah, that's, that's. That's a good one. The Young Bucks? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I mean, they own, or, or not own, vice president of uh, one of the biggest companies now. So, yep. Drew McIntyre? Oh, yeah. Obviously, world champion. So, yeah. Hurt Business? Yes. Hurt Business. They, and I like how you put them in as a group, too, because. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, we talked about them, I think, uh, a podcast or two ago where, you know, pretty much they put a bunch of guys that weren't doing anything like Cedric and Sheldon and stuff like that, bringing back MVP. Lashley was always doing something, but, you know, they put them together and now they actually, they, they mean something. So, yeah, they, they had a hot year. It was the same formula, but exactly opposite of the New Day. Right, the the goofy whatever, like like as far as where they put three guys together, New Day wasn't supposed to work, right? It was supposed to be the the joke with whatever else that came out. With the hurt business, I don't think they knew what they had until MVP, the way that he brought all that together. And then now you see more individual even more personality individually, even when like Sheldon Benjamin and Cedric Alexander are hot tagging each other, you know what I'm saying? As a teammate. You feel as a storyline, like, you know, these are, you know, big, powerful, hurt guys, and then they're all looking for the top spot, like it should be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's got a greater, to me, the dynamic in the hurt business is what they're looking for with Roman Reigns' head of the table, but it doesn't have that flow. It doesn't have that, you know, you got Jey Uso there, and you got, you know what I'm saying? The, the flow of it's not there as naturally as what I think the Hurt Business and to what the New Day was is why they were so successful, right? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Cody Rhodes. Yeah, he, he had a heck of a year too. Yeah, absolutely. Chris Jericho. Yes, a lot of good things he did this year. So uh, that, that's a good one for the list. Gallows and Anderson. Yes, man. And especially because not only that they're an impact now and AEW, I, every, they worked for all the companies this year. They also had the talking shop and mania. Talking shop and mania, dude. Yeah. That's the new feeding ground. See Karate Man's out. Karate Man made his debut. Now he's in TNA. Yeah. I, dude, I laughed my ass. Dude, when I saw Karate, and now Ethan Page is going to fight himself and watching that promo of him arguing with the karate. Oh, man, that was odd. I, I did see that. You were there, you Dennis. That? I did that with uh, in Clash before. Me versus the Canadian Destroyer arguing with myself, and I wrestled yep. myself. Uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be good. He'll 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 do great with it. John Moxley. How, how was that, Petey? Oh, Moxley, of course. Yeah, yeah, Moxley will be on there. Um, well, how, how many is that? We got two more left. Two more left. But tell your story. Uh, it, it was difficult. I had to do a pre-tape segment as the Canadian Destroyer, um, and I had to leave pauses in it knowing what I'm going to respond back in the ring. So the promo itself was hard, but it looked like the the producer said, oh, man, that came off really good. Like, I'm surprised he made that work. I didn't know how you were going to do it. but And then I uh, 
I actually had Phil Atlas. I wanted to get M Dog before he had the big beard because we had like the same build. I wanted to bring him in to be the Canadian destroyer part of it. Um, but he had the, the beard. You couldn't hide the beard. So I just got Phil Atlas and he put on a shirt. It, the blow off, I'm like, we had we had such a good build up, but we couldn't get M Dog. And so we got Phil Atlas. We ended up becoming a tag team, I think. And then that's when I retired from wrestling, I believe. I think that's how it went. <laughs> now, here comes the two question marks I threw on this list because I feel like maybe this, this list needed two underdogs. So I put okay. Eddie Kingston. Yeah, I would say uh, Q3 and Q4. Uh, when he was with, uh, with AEW, yeah, he had... That, yeah, that he had those a good year. promos and then kind of bringing the luchadors in. And I thought he finished the end of the year strong for a guy that was essentially unemployed in the wrestling business, never really had a major television contract, showed up, wrestled one, what, AEW dark match against Cody for the TNA television title. And then all of a sudden, I mean, he got himself a job off of that. So I felt like maybe you got to give a guy like that some props. Yeah. Absolutely. Who do you got last on the list? Nick Aldis, NWA champion. He's still been champion all year long, out wrestling. Uh, you know, any guy that can hold the champion all year, championship all year long, and especially the 10 pounds of gold, should make any list, right? Yeah, I mean, he brought – and, I mean, obviously it's the help of, like, Billy Corrigan and, and everybody all together as a collective, but um, the NWA – championship um even when i was in the business like you know starting out like it really wasn't anything like nobody really cared about it it was something like oh we don't really pay attention to that anymore like it was it didn't really mean much they really brought that back up to like as high as a high point it's been in a very very long time so um yeah i mean i think he deserves to be on the list now those are the two that could i think those are the only two that I could see getting bumped off this list. If anybody yeah. could propose somebody that probably should be on there more. But I, I mean, I, I feel like well, top to bottom. Kind the of one thing we didn't take into account is, you know, uh, overseas. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sure people are going to start saying, uh, you know, yeah, like Will Os kept Osprey. This or, yeah. So, I mean, we kept this North American, you know, so maybe we'll have to do like a Japanese one or a, a UK one or whatever the case may be for the next time. Um, but, you know, I mean, the we, only we other switch person, it out. The only other person I think someone could make a case for getting kicked off is Roman Reigns just because of COVID and he sat out the majority of the year. That is true. Yeah, he, but, he's, yeah. but, 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 but is it quality or quantity? Because you know what? You can't argue with what he's come back to, to have been with uh, Paul Heyman and the heel head of the table. It's just his sort of what we all agree to. And I think most wrestling fans is his true calling of a character. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I think <clears throat> you see different levels and depth and you know storyline guy you know just in the the you know 20 minutes into the match and then he's still there making the right facial expression the emotional the you know the the, the, the different the, the human connection instead of the machine right so I, I'm excited so I I'm more of a uh quality not quality Right. You give me the so so but but again, Dennis, different people have different uh criteria. So I think it's interesting because you know, there's people that's left off the list, you know, that there's always gonna be people left off and it's always gonna be argumentative, but it's uh all those people that you listed, Dennis, have had great years. It it was tough because there were some names I left off that I was like, ah, I think he should be in, but I'm going to leave them off. And, and you know, every list needs an underdog. And I put Eddie and all this on there, I think, as the two underdogs. I I have a feeling by the end of the day, one of those two won't be on the list. Uh, if I'm that's that's between you guys and the fans. I don't mind whatever happens now. For you two. Just real quick. Give me your prediction on who wins it. This is tough oh. because I, I, each one of these guys could win this whole thing. 
So I we're think t- if, if we had everybody on here and we're voting and stuff, I mean, I know who I want just because of talking shop and mania. Okay. I mean, <laughs> that's just because I love that. But, um, you know, I mean, think about it. Who, who won our sweet 16 for, uh, you know, old versus new or whatever. Uh, it was, I think, didn't, didn't Moxley win it? Yes. So right now I would say he's the favorite to win it. I don't know if he's going to win it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it might go to like, like an Omega maybe. Um, I could see that, but my thing, I would say Moxley's the favorite to win it through us. D Mac. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's tough, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, great, ar- great arguments. And then, like you said, you want to take the whole picture and, and the entertainment value of what's happened. You cannot overlook what, uh, Gallows and Anderson have done and what, like, if you're a big fan of, you know, I would say the corporation and then the rest of it that's doing it. So, you know, but I could see, you know, like a, you know, Drew McIntyre because because of the way that he carried, but, you know, Moxley or Omega, but, you know, like I always, the more my, I guess, I don't, I don't know if it's MVP, but the one that it's stuck in my crawl that I keep going back to that doesn't get as much credit as they deserve. And I think you put them as a tag team, but, you know, it's Sasha and Bailey, but, but mostly like Bailey, you know, like, Sa- Sa- like w- w- when you look at her body of work and the character she developed, she's sort of developed more of what Sammy Callahan has sort of become where he can wrestle and be in all different storylines. And he's more of the draw, you know what I mean? Like than it is. And I think that that's so organic for me as a wrestling fan, like that's the one that just sort of popped out and I never thought, but true appreciation. So that's just sort of like, I don't know, maybe that's the ICU award, but I, I think Moxley for the whole is probably the slight odds on favorite. Boy, I'm I'm kind of with you, D Mac, and you're thinking if I'm gonna have to guess, I might say Sasha and Bailey because how many times before this show became what it is today did you and I sit around and go, Sasha and Bailey are the only thing watchable right now in WWE? Sasha and Bailey have really brought their games up. Sasha and, and, and each week it was Sasha and Bailey, Sasha and Bailey. And I am not a huge women wrestling fan. I, I appreciate it, and I'll watch it if it's on the card. I don't search it out. The Attitude Era really killed it for me when it was just TNA and, you know, bra and panties matches, which don't get me wrong, as a guy I appreciate it, but as a wrestling fan, it's I want wrestling. So I, I still kind of have to get back into that view. In the early 2000s, we're not any better. So I appreciate what it is now, and I think that my, my guess is Sasha and Bailey. What I think it's going to be is a Hurt Business or John Moxley. Okay. So, with that being said, DMAC, people find you. What do you have going on, my friend? Check out Woodward Sports. I'm getting ready to blow that up with the grind time and everything else. And uh, But, uh, you know, getting excited. Uh, obviously, hockey season's starting. Red Wings just announced Dylan Larkin as the captain. So, for any of you hockey fans out there, it's sort of a landmark day because it's, you know, one of these that I mark as remember when. So, when the kids hold the Stanley Cup and – four, five, six years, we can remember this day, January 13th. So uh, there's not any blue check mark and Darren McCarty four on Twitter. Pete. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, IPD Williams. I kind of made it a goal for myself that eh, maybe I'll start getting back on my Instagram. I mean, I got the followers and I think people are just waiting for me to post. And then obviously uh, I'm really excited about uh, this wrestling perspective, YouTube channel, which I'm sure you'll talk about right now, Dennis. Wow, you are psychic. How'd you know that was coming? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like we've done this for years or something. <laughs> we're kindred spirits. Like I said, we're really trying to hawk this new YouTube channel. And as the followers grow, the things we do on there will grow. We're playing on, if we get to like 500 followers, we're going to do a followers only a Zoom show where you guys will be able to come into the Zoom, pop on, ask us questions, but that's only when we get the 500 subscribers, so make sure you're one of those 500. Come talk wrestling with us. Geek out over D-Mac, Petey Williams, Lars Fredrickson, uh, Jason Kindle, Dimitri Young. 
not so much me, but everybody else. You can come geek out and talk wrestling with us. Subscribers only show when we get there. The new Instagram page, Wrestling Perspective Pod. Uh, WP underscore pod on Twitter. Make sure, listen, that's where you get all the links. We have the audio podcast, so you can take the show with you anywhere you want to go. All major podcast platforms. I think that's about it. Oh, we're going to be on HBO thing. soon. Yeah. No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. Go ahead. One more thing, guys. Remember, Dennis likes his porn and his wrestling separate unless he's watching wrestling porn. That's about true, too. I mean, huh? is it... I, that's what I learned tonight. I'm going to have to go search that out now. <laughs> that's very well said, though. I mean, that, that seems like. Yeah. Shakespeare or something. I know what I'm doing the rest of the night, guys. <laughs> okay. Same. What? Same thing you're doing every night? Wait, listen, Petey. Plastic the house. I heard Dennis's All house right, sitting. Dad. Plasticize the house. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yes. And by the way, once again, uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, guys, thank you so much for teaming up with us. We're really excited. And uh, listen. We look forward to having some of their guys on uh, our show. We look forward to going on some of their shows. And hopefully our relationship with them grows. So go support Pro Wrestling Illustrated. They're amazing people. We use their PWI 500 every year and discuss that. that I, that's all I can say, guys. So from here on out, Wrestling Perspective, thank you so much for listening and watching. We really appreciate each and one of you guys.